Hello, everybody, and welcome to Learning with Chrono Revisit. Today, we are going to be taking a second look at the changing installation directory for vanilla Minecraft. I covered this in a previous video about installing mods, and that video is no longer valid. It is completely and totally 100% incorrect now. And the reason for that is because of Heartbleed. Not really, but kind of. Yeah, I'll explain. What happened is uh, Mojang changed the launcher. They switched to a new version of the launcher and the video was for the old version of the launcher. And then thanks to the Heartbleed bug, they permanently end of life the old launcher. So now we have the new launcher to play with. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean exactly? Well, let's start with the initial problem. The initial problem is, what if I don't want Minecraft installed where it is? Well, where does Minecraft install? I mean, obviously it's running right now, so the files are downloaded to my PC. But if I close out and we go to where I launched the program from, the files aren't there. So where do they go? Well, they go into what's called a Windows system variable called app data. Now, how you get there, you type in the Windows key and R at the same time, and this will work for any version of Windows. And then you type in parentheses or percentage app data and then percentage. And the two percentage on either side tell Windows that it's a variable instead of an actual path or an application to run. And the app data is the specific variable name. So all we have to do is just type that in, hit OK. And then we get taken to the system drive, the, anyways, yeah, system drive, the users folder, administrator, which is just the username, app data, and roaming and then we see the mi dot minecraft folder in here and this is where all our files are installed well what if we don't want our files to be in there in the old launcher we had to use batch files and lines of text that it was kind of annoying and complicated and to have multiple different installation directories for multiple different setups you had to have multiple different batch files now the new launcher makes this both easier and more complicated at the same time. I will explain. Let's open up our launcher. And once it actually loads, there it goes. Okay, we can see at the bottom we have a profile and a drop-down list. Now this is created automatically when you log in to the Minecraft launcher for the first time. You'll get your, your Minecraft name in the drop-down list here. And why did they do this? Well, because of this button here where it says edit profile, you can click that and you get a whole bunch of really advanced settings. And I'll run through them real quick. The profile name is just a friendly name for you. You can change the name of the profile without changing your login information. So it's not gonna hurt anything if you change the profile name. The game directory is where the files are, in, are, are downloaded to. And this is what we're going to be focusing on this in this video. The resolution is the size of the window. And while it's not really useful for most people, this information is really useful for people like me who want to record in windowed mode. I don't like recording in full screen mode. I like recording in windowed mode. Thus, let, being able to tell it I want to record in 1280 by 720 is really useful because then I can tell when I record it's recording at 1280 by 720 which is the standard 720 resolution and it's really good for YouTube and upload speeds I would record at 1080 but one I like running in windowed mode it makes looking up things easier and two it makes uploading a bit of a pain in the butt and very few people actually have the internet connection to run 1080p video streaming from YouTube. So I usually just don't bother. 
but I'm going to turn that off for right now because my screen resolution is 1280 by 720 and this would just take up the entire thing. Now, I would point out real quick that this is inside of the border. It does not take into account the border around the windows or the title bar up at the top. So this is actually inside the window. So if you do hit record with fraps, that's the resolution you're going to output at. Makes life easy. The automatically ask Mojang for assistance when fixing crashes. Well, that's basically you crash. It sends the information to Mojang. Default setting. I usually turn it off because chances are if I crash, it's my fault and they don't really need to know about it. It would just be spam to them. Launcher visibility. Now that's this thing in the background here that will automatically close when you run Minecraft, but you can change it so that it will reopen when the game closes or it will just keep the launcher open. You might have use for that. You might not. It's all up to you. Uh, the version selection. Now, these three checkboxes actually determine what show up in this drop-down list here. The enable experimental development version. These are the snapshots that you're always hearing about if you follow Mojang closely. Or a lot of YouTubers will cover the snapshots. And basically, it's the, it's the in-progress development stuff. And if we check that, we can have, or it'll warn you about the development builds and blah, 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 blah. They can't guarantee it's stable and so on and so forth. And then we can actually get our, all the snapshots in here. And we can hit the latest one, which just came out recently. Or we can hit the old versions, the versions from actually before 1.0. And then old, unstable versions, blah, 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 blah. And then we can actually scroll down and see the beta versions of Minecraft the whole way back from, you know, 1.8.1 down to, you know, 1.0. You know, the beta 1.0, not just 1.0. And then we have the even older stuff, the alpha versions that are completely and totally unstable. But we have the really, really, really old stuff. This is first, first gen Minecraft. I didn't even start playing when this stuff was around. I think I think I started playing with beta 1.4. I think I started around here. Maybe it was 1.2. I forget. Yeah, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, so uh, if you want to run on the old versions, that's what you check. Uh, for example... Kurt J. Mack, the guy who does Farlands or Bust, he runs in the beta 1.7.4 because that's the last version that the Farlands were in. Anyway, so uh, obviously the use version, the drop-down list here, will let you pick which version you want to use. If you don't want to update automatically, you tell it that you want to use this version or whatever version you want to use and so on and so forth. It's for servers who don't update instantly. And there are plenty of really good reasons not to update instantly because some updates have been known to crash and kill servers. So some server admins want to let the updates stabilize before they update. That's fine. The next section is for Java settings, obviously, and obviously they are advanced settings. Uh, the executable is the actual Java executable itself. It will default to the 64-bit ver version of Java if you have it. Uh, if you don't, it will default to the 32-bit. Or, I mean, this is really useful if you want to manually set where Java is. Like, if you tell it that... I don't want Java in this location, I want it in that location, or if you're using different versions of Java uh, for one reason or another, you can tell Minecraft to use a specific version of Java. This is good for like development stuff and testing. Chances are you're not going to use that setting. Uh, the JVM arguments, that's the Java Virtual Machine arguments, and the default argument that's in here is actually the argument to set how much RAM you allocate to Minecraft. Vanilla Minecraft should be fine with one gig of RAM unless you're doing something really out there. Uh, I usually set it to four gig of RAM just because that's me. I have 16 gig of RAM to play with on this server. I may as well give a quarter of that to Minecraft. 
makes it run more stable. I can crank up the settings and all that fun stuff. You don't have to set it. Um, if you don't have a 64-bit version of Windows or the 64-bit version of Java, you cannot set this setting properly. Uh, the max you'll be able to tell it is 1.5 gig of RAM. Uh, so let that, you know, let that sink in a little bit. If you have a problem setting higher versions of RAM and you think you should be able to, uh, you have to have the 64-bit version of Java before it will let you. But that's something to think about. All right, so let's go back to where we want to fiddle with our settings. This is game directory up here. Now, in the past... In the old versions of the launcher, we would have to tell the tell Windows that the app data variable needs to point in a different direction from what the default setting is. Here, we just tell it the game directory is whatever we want it to be. Now, there's no browse button, so you're going to have to do this manually, which is really simple. I mean, you just go to your directory and you just copy the path itself and then select it all and paste in there control a selects all control v pastes that kind of thing because right clicks does not work in that text box which is okay um so now we have d colon backslash minecraft and that's this directory right here and then we save the profile and then we hit play and then it will actually re-download all of the stuff that it needs to re-download and it will reset up everything. Now, if you notice, there's something missing in here, specifically the .jar file. We have saves, we have resource packs, and we have logs. Now, that's okay. That's actually perfectly fine. The main reason why you would want to change the install directory is because of this folder right here, the saves folder. This is where the world is saved, and that's the one that takes up the most space and writes to the hard drive the most. So if you have a solid state drive and you're really worried about the write limitations like I am, just change the directory to a storage directory and it will save the world here. But like I said, you notice the .jar isn't there anymore. Well, if we look in the app data folder again, and in the Minecraft, we can still see that the launcher is in here, the version numbers are in here, the dot jars and everything like that, the 1.7.9 dot jar, which is I'm using right now. The main files to run the game will always be in here, will always be in the dot Minecraft folder, but the saves location will change, and the resource packs will change, and the logs will change. And that's perfectly fine for what most people will need it for. This is perfectly fine. This will work great for you. This is, will be good if you want to set up a special kind of backup for your saves or if you want different versions of the game. You can have different versions of resource packs. And for each version, you'll have different logs and all that fun stuff. Having it all located in the central directory here like this on a different hard drive can be insanely useful. As for changing the dot Minecraft itself, I can't see why you would want to, honestly. Um, I see no value in that, so I never actually bothered looking up how to change it. Now, I would assume it's something similar to the batch files we had before where we would change the system variable app data, but obviously that doesn't work with the batch file. And as I said, there really is no value to it. So there's no point to. So yeah. Um, anyways, I hope that was useful. You know, it's, I mean, just that simple and that easy. And this is a nice quick little video. And I, if that was useful to you, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, I will try to help as best as I can. Uh, just let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.